Hello friends, today we will discuss how to check adequacy of sub-base layer in a flexible payment and I would advise you to watch my video on design of flexible payment also which will be required to understand the basics of payment design and this video is available in Hindi as well as in English. In the design of flexible payment, as you all know, sub-base course is the first layer which is provided above subgrade and it is provided to fulfill three objectives one to provide a strong support for compaction of the base layer that is WMM or WBM layer to protect the subgrade from overstressing and to serve as drainage and filter layer subbase may be of either granular material like natural sand murum gravel, brick ballast, metal, crushed stone, crushed slag or any other material meeting the requirement of grading and physical properties as given in MORTH specifications. It can also be of a chemically stabilized material with additives like cement, lime, fly ash or any other cementitious stabilizer. Any material that meets requirement of grading and strength as per MOR pH specifications can be used as sub-base layer. Thickness of sub-base layer in a flexible payment will be dictated by design traffic. If the design thickness is more than 200 mm, it should be provided in two layers. And when you provide sub-base in two layers, the upper layer will function as drainage layer and lower layer as filter or separation layer. The difference between these two is in terms of grading of aggregate. But if the design thickness is less than 200 mm, then it should be provided as a single layer and this single layer will act both as a filter and drainage layer. IRC 37 2018 suggests that the minimum thickness of drainage layer and filter layer individually should be 100 mm. When subbase is provided in a single layer, then it will act as a filter come drainage layer and its thickness should be at least 150 mm. Thickness of a layer be at least 2.5 times the nominal maximum aggregate size with a minimum of 100 mm. And finally, it should be able to carry construction traffic that may apply on the GSP layer. And this is important. The thickness of subbase should be such that during construction of base layer, the strain produced by construction traffic on the top of subgrade should not exceed the limiting strain as calculated using rutting equation given in IRC 37. And the criteria for limiting the strain on subgrade level as suggested in IRC 37 is given by this equation. NR that is the number of repetitions for rutting failure depends upon the limiting strain, vertical compressive strain at top of subgrade level. This is the equation for 80% liability. This is the equation for 90% liability. Now, important here is to determine this limiting strain. And to determine limiting strain, you need to know NR. And NR here is the number of operations of dumpers and other construction vehicles on the GSB layer to carry materials for construction of base layer. The thickness of GSB should be sufficient to carry the traffic coming on while constructing the base layer. That is the philosophy. And this must be estimated like this. Let us assume that there will be 200 repetitions of dumpers for laying a layer of 250 mm WB, WMM. And let us also assume that load on the rear tandem axle is 240 kN and on front axle it is 80 kN. Now this 200 kN is divided on two axles and therefore 240 is now to 120 kN single axle load. Now this 120 axle load is larger than the, the standard axle load and therefore it will create a vehicle damage factor. So vehicle damage factor of a dumper will be 120 divided by standard axle load that is 80 kN to the power 4 
multiply by 2 because there are two axles now plus 4 front axle 80 by 65 power 4 and that is 12.41 so vehicle damage factor for each dumper is 12.41 if you say there are 200 repetitions the so total standard axle will be 200 into 12.41 that is 2483 now this is just one example assuming certain repetitions here if you have correct value of repetitions then you can calculate this value very correctly but what i suggest either you take the calculated value here or 10000 whichever is more so thickness of sub base layer should be sufficient to carry a traffic of 10000 standard axles without creating strain on the subgrade which is beyond the permissible strain now let me explain this again through one example let us say a flexible pavement is designed for the following data design traffic is 130 msa effective cbr of subgrade soil is 10 percent and let us say when you design this pavement as per 37 you get this composition that's a trial composition 50 millimeter of bc layer 50 millimeter of dbm layer then you provide because cementated base is provided here 190 millimeter thick so above that you provide a crack relief layer of 100 millimeter and below that you have a granular sub base of 160 millimeter now the point in question today is whether this sub base of 160 millimeter is adequate to take construction traffic while constructing cement treated base layer and therefore let us check the adequacy of this sub base layer. So, let us now consider a two layer structure, a subgrade, and above that you have the layer of sub base. Calculate MR value. MR value of subgrade is given by this equation. If CBR is less than 10 per 5%, you use this equation. If it is more than 5%, you use this equation. In the present case, CBR is 10%, and therefore we use the second equation, and that is the MR value of subgrade. 76.83 MPa megapascal and the MR value of granular layer that is your GSP is given by this equation 0.2 into H as thickness in millimeter power 0.45 into MR support MR support here is 76.83 and that gives you MR value of GSP layer 150.80 MPa now let us calculate what is the permissible limiting strain at the top of subgrade using this equation nr is equal to 1.41 into 10 to power minus 8 1 upon epsilon b power 4.5337 this is the equation for rating failure for 90 percent reliability and because our traffic is 130 msa so we will consider this equation corresponding to 90 percent reliability nr here is 10,000 and corresponding to 10,000 this epsilon b will be 0.002433 meter or 2433 microns now this is the limiting strain at the top of subgrade so you model this structure now as a two layer structure in iit pave the top layer will be gsb with this property 160 millimeter thickness mr value 150.8 as we calculated mu 0.35 subgrade MR value 76.83 corresponding to 10% CBR and mu is 0.35 and other parameters will be single wheel load of 20,000 Newton, tire pressure 0.56 MPa and dual wheel assembly. So you model it in the IIT PM. Let us move to IIT PM now and let us see what is the strain at the level of subgrade. So here is IIT PM software. Double click it and then you start this IIT pave. This screen will appear. Design a new payment section. Number of layers are two. And you feed these values here, elastic modulus of the first layer. That is 150.8. Thickness of Poisson ratio is 0 0.35. Thickness is 160 millimeter next layer is your subgrade elastic modulus is 76.83 Poisson ratio is 0 0.35 wheel load is 20,000 
tire pressure is 0 0.56 unless this point is only 2 depth at the depth of 160 millimeter that is the level of subgrade distance 0 another one is 160 millimeter and at a distance of 155 millimeter dual wheel assembly and submit the data okay now run the program okay now you see the file here so the strain here is you get a epsilon z that is 2601 2601 into 10 to the power minus 2 so 0 0.002601 so the calculated strain from it pave for a sub base thickness of 160 millimeter is 0 0.002601 that is 2601 microns which is larger than the limiting strain 2433 and therefore design is not safe let us now increase the thickness of the sub base to 170 millimeter so properties now changed the gsb layer has a thickness of 170 millimeter now and if you recalculate mr value MR for support will be same 76.83 but because H has changed now so MR for GSB will change that is your 0.2 into H power 0 0.45 into MR support so H is now 170 MR becomes 154.97 mu remains same other parameters also remain same that is single wheel load of 20,000 Newton tire pressure 0 0.56 MPa and dual wheel assembly you again move to IIT PAVE software and find out what is the critical strain. We go back to the edit. Let us now change the elastic modulus. Elastic modulus here is 154.97. Poisson ratio remains same. Thickness is now 170. Elastic modulus for subgrade remains same. This is same. This is same. Everything is same. Now only the depth of point is now 170. 170. Submit the data. Okay. Run the program. Okay. Now you see the results here. Epsilon Z is now 2416. 0.2416 into 10 to the power minus 2. That is 0 0.002416 meter. The vertical compressive strain at top of subgrade is now 0 0.002416 that is 2416 micron which is less than 2433 and therefore design is safe. So that is how we check the adequacy of sub base layer to carry the construction traffic safely without straining subgrade beyond its limit. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question, you can write in the comment box.